this delightful woman. I am from Dundee. Generally, we are unimpressed. <laughs> In fact, when I was five years old, in a little village called Inver, outside Dunkeld, I met an old woman called Mrs. McIntyre. And Mrs. McIntyre had, when she was young, sat on Claude Debussy's knee. <laughs> Again, I was unimpressed. <laughs> well, in September 1877, General Ulysses S. Grant came to Dundee and he was unimpressed. <laughs> and I read an account of the occasion in a book by John Treble. It's called The High Girders. It was about the building of the, the Tay Bridge, which was um, the longest bridge in the world at the time. And, well, Grant was in Dundee. The only thing anybody could remember that he had said while he was there was, that's a mighty long bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That was that. So I just kind of juggled the facts about it a bit and uh, made this song. It's called General Grant's Visit to Dundee. <laughs>
voice came from the back of the hall which said, Would you like us to go? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a Glaswegian who had learned the accent. <laughs> Timing was perfect. <clears throat> anyway, I have a pal in Dundee, a fellow called Jock. And Jock drinks in a place called the Pole Park Bar. But no Dundonian calls it that. We call it Bistols. And Jock was in there one night having a pint. And the man who runs the pub came up the stair from the cellar. And he had in his hand a sheaf of papers, 15 sheets of paper. I've got photocopies of them at home. Um, the best way to describe these sheets is that they were unwanted posters. <laughs> <laughs> there was 15 people involved, 14 women and one man. And um, each sheet had two photographs, one from the front, one from the side. Down the side of each sheet, a very detailed description, including all injuries and disfigurements. And at the bottom of the sheet was the autograph of the Chief Constable of Dundee. Now, these 14 magnificent women and one magnificent man were barred from every single pub in Dundee. It's a lot of pubs. And like yourselves, I was overwhelmed with admiration. There's <laughs> a lot of pubs to be bothered from. I wanted to celebrate particularly these women, these 14 fabulous women. And uh, my first idea was to make great big screen prints of them. You know, like Andy Warhol type of prints and fill the gallery. But Jock pointed out one of them had the same surname as himself. And although she wasn't his grandmother, she very easily could have been. <laughs> I understood that. Now, um, there's a wonderful choir in Dundee, a women's choir, 50 strong. They're called Loads of Women Singing. <laughs> They're a great choir. If you get a chance to hear them, go along. They're great. And occasionally I write for them. I was trying to make something for them, but I couldn't find a way in. And then I attended a wake for my Uncle Willie. And at the wake, my Auntie Agnes was telling a story. And she said, there was three of us there. There was me, Kathleen, and Muggy Shah. So I said, uh, who, who was that other woman? And my Auntie Kathleen said, then I tell him, Agnes. He'll write a song and he'll call it Muggy Shah. <laughs> So I said, thank you very much, Aunt Kathleen. And um, that night, I thought, it's a very singable name. <laughs> you know, if, if Muggy Shaw was born in Hovingham, her name would be Margaret Shaw. <laughs> you wouldn't rush to get your pen to write a song, would you? But really? well, Muggy Shaw, I thought that's pretty good. So I made a composite character out of these 14 women, and I called her Muggy Shaw. Now this song is in the full triumph language of Dundee, so I will hopefully meet you at the end. <laughs> this is me since Friday night. My throat is dry, my scalp is dirt. My ears are bloodshot, what a sight. I never can't you got that. I'm dehydrated half the day. My head is nipping short of breath. That in the other than them both a mass of palpitations. <laughs> but I'm no as bad as Muggy Shah. <laughs> she used to drink at the top of the la, barred for bristles, me and I. But I'm no as bad as Muggy Shah. I saw her up the lochy road. She'll come out running cats and dogs. If Muggy had not ate my lobes. I could have wore my ear rings. <laughs> that was as much as I could mind. She Catherine Kearney dragged behind up the lolly a bottle of wine, disturbing other leeches. 
on no as bad as muggy shah, she is to drink at the tap of the la, bad for bustles me and I, but I am no as bad as muggy shah. They say though muggy's no a man, she'll tap her like so dull up Dan, thrust him down the lavy pan, <laughs> and never scale a mouth full. She seekens here, she seekens there, she's bleached the peace for here a blare. She says, I was drunk and I want mere. She'd flag the hardest booby. Yeah. Oh, I'm no as bad as Muggy Shah. She has to drink at the top of the la. Barred with vessels, me and I. But I'm no as bad as Muggy Shah. Wild women wrecked enough. Inside she's hard and out she's tough. The sailor man's been in the huff for four and twenty years now. My hands just want to bite it piss. My skin needs streets to the says of my face. I'm a hack it, glake it, waste those space. Oh, how my brain is bum. Pin. But <laughs> I'm no as bad as my shah. She used to drink at the top of the la. Barred for bustles, me and I. But I am no as bad as Muggy Shah. Muggy bloody Muggy Shah. Muggy bloody shot the crab. Thirty days in an extra twa. For winking at the sheriff. <laughs> I'm no as bad as Muggy Shah.